sort of a general classification of neurons. You can sort of look at what the shape of the dendrite looks like with respect to the stoma. So you can have multipolar, where you have a whole bunch of dendrites coming off in different directions. There are cells called stellate cells. What do you, what do you guess stellate cells look like? Stars, Stars right. So the stellate cells. And then there are bipolar, where you have an ax, ax, dendrites just going off in two directions. And then you have these, what are called unipolar, where you have the soma and a dendrite, which is sort of just going past. It actually doesn't go through the soma. So yeah, the ones going to and from the muscle, so they'll be sitting in this ganglia, the dorsal root ganglia, holds all these cell bodies, and then they send out axons or dendrites, which just sort of pass by the soma and actually don't go through the soma. So here's some actual reconstructions. This is the stellate cell reconstruction. You can see it's a multipolar. And then here is the a pyramidal cell where you have the apical dendrite. And then this thinner line is the axon. Often they will, in reconstructions, color them differently. And the axon is really a very complex bundle of machinery. It has all of these microtubules going down them. So they're very, very densely packed with microtubules. And then on them, they have these things that are called kinesins, so they're kind of like muscles in that they actually will, with ATP, actually walk down the kinesins, and they will attach to it a vesicle, which will then be used to transport proteins and things like that to replenish the axon at the synapse and get proteins down there. It's a long time. If you just waited for diffusion, it could be days to weeks between something that's being produced up in your head to literally diffuse all the way down to the synapse down in, in your spinal cord. But with these active processes, it actually just marches along. You put it in a vesicle, put it on, marches, and, and gets there. And you have ones that are going anterograde, going from the cell body all the way down, and then carrying wastes and things like that back up to the soma. And it can be a long time before some kind of signal gets passed up to the soma to tell it to start producing more of a particular protein and before and that those receptors perhaps then being brought all the way back out to the synapse. So that can take a long time. And so a lot of times there'll be a lot of just receptors sitting there in wait at the, the synapse, and if you want plasticity to change the sensitivity of a synapse, well, you just change the, how many are moving up in and out of the, the membrane. But you don't really wait until the soma. Now, I, and we'll see a lot of things where, you know, you would think a lot of change in protein expression would happen, but you don't see a lot of change in protein expression in, in learning until fairly relatively late in the game. We talk about cells in a bunch of different ways, and we have to identify them, and we can identify them by their shapes. So, you know, this is what Cajal did, and went in and, you know, labeled all these cells by staining them. We can look at whether what kind of neuro, what kind of drugs affect them, whether they are respond to change differently, so, and generally what kind of neurotransmitter they're releasing. So if they're GABAergic or glutamatergic, or if they release acetylcholine or norepinephrine or dopamine, you know, we'll label them by what neurotransmitter. Physiology, so we can have a lot of cells, but some of them will fire different ways, and we'll show you some pictures of, of different kinds of patterns neurons fire in. Uh, and then the other is we can use immunohistochemistry to identify different expression of proteins, and we will label cells by the kinds of proteins that they express. And this is sort of actually the gold standard. The anatomy is kind of hard. The pharmacology is, you know, there's lots of cells that release glutamate or GABA uh, that doesn't but the protein expression is sort of the gold standard. And what we're trying to do now is sort of link what proteins are expressed and what kind of behaviors they have. So this is sort of the, the beginning of identifying tracts in the body was using what's called Valerian degeneration. And this is where you would get an injury at some place, and then after it, you get a, a severed nerve bundle, well, the body actually has a lot of feedback mechanisms to maintain cells. So it recognizes that if that cell is no longer connected to what it's supposed to do uh, to the, its target, well, why maintain that cell? So we immediately start degrading it down. And you can see here is an injury. 
So these, the stain is staining for injury. And then those bundles that went there go up and project up, and you can see all these degeneration of, of different parts up at levels up in the spinal cord. So a lot of the connections known in the, the body were originally done by looking to see when you cut one place what else, where the degeneration goes. So then Golgi identified the stain. It's a silver-based stain, I believe. And it, the beauty of the stain, it seems strange, is that it only stained about 1% of the cells. And it sort of stained cells indiscriminately. So, hey, I want to go look at anatomy. I don't want to bias to one cell population which stains. The other is if you stain all the cells, well, the tissue's just black. And you don't see anything. So when you stain only 1%, you get nice contrast between a cell and the background. And so here is, this is not exactly how it would look, but what he would do is go look at reconstructions, draw them, and then get so familiar with different cell types. This is sort of a, a representation of a whole bunch of cells that he actually would put into one image to sort of reconstruct what it might look like if you had a perfect image. And the other is that these cells project in and out, so you have to move your, cam your microscope focus in and out to do this. And the, the technique they use is they had a, it's called camera lucida, so they have a microscope and then it literally projects onto a piece of paper and you sit there and you trace out the, the cell and then you move your focus to, to continue following that one that moved in and out of the focal plane. And this is what undergrads were made for. So Nowadays, we know that we can get computers to do this much better, and so they, there's things like NeuroLucida, which is, sits there and actually will move the focus in and out and reconstruct these and do a lot of things to make the reconstruction, measure the diameter and the length of sections and store it in a file format, which then you can read into other programs to simulate neurons. And you guys uh, in, in Matt Johnson's lab use these reconstructions, right, to... to we won't use any reconstructions in, in our class, but um, you, you will recognize that it's a fairly straightforward leap from the cable theory to um, doing these fairly large reconstructions.